Austin once said in a letter to her sister Cassandra, it was a letter actually about Pride and Prejudice, that uh, she expected a good deal of what she called ingenuity from her reader. She actually adapted a quotation from Walter Scott's poem Marmion, and she said, I write not for such dull elves as have not a great deal of ingenuity themselves. And Emma is a kind of test of our ingenuity as readers. Um, what we notice and what we don't notice. Uh, what we might be able to notice that Jane Austen has done so cleverly um, that we can only see it on a second or third or who knows fourth reading of the novel. Um, it's a love story, uh, Emma, but it's not at all clear who's actually in love. And one of the uh, delusions that we are um, invited to share with the heroine is that she knows who's in love with whom. And the deepest trick of all is to make her convinced not just that she thinks she knows what about other characters' hearts, but that she thinks she knows about her own heart. Um, so Emma becomes convinced that there is a love story going on between herself and Frank Churchill. And we have to rely on her own judgment of this. She convinces herself that she's in love with Frank Churchill. Emma continued to entertain no doubt of her being in love. She's never been in love before. She thinks she knows what love is, um, but she doesn't. And all the time, there is actually a love story going on between her and Mr Knightley. We should realise from the very first chapter of Emma, where we're told that Mr Knightley is the only person who ever sees any faults in Emma and certainly the only person who ever tells her about them, that the two are destined for each other. So I feel no spoiler alert should really be necessary. But of course, Emma only realises that um, she's in love with Mr Knightley at the moment where he seems destined to marry somebody else. And there's a famous sentence, a rightly famous sentence. It darted through her with the speed of an arrow that Mr Knightley must marry no one but herself. <laughs> and that must is so much Emma's must that even at the moment where she thinks she's going to lose him, she must, he must marry her. And it seems to me to be a profound, actually, meditation um, on the nature of love that, uh, that, um, that Jane Austen can have written a novel where the heroine herself doesn't realise she's in love until very late on in, in the novel. And therefore, where the reader themselves has to be tricked into this realisation too, and as it were, re-tricked into it on each rereading of the novel. That um, uh, human psychology in Austen and narrative technique are deep enough to show us a character who does not know their own strongest feelings until it seems almost too late.